Hello, I'm Kate Harmony. And I'm Ray Harmony. Welcome to the Hack Music Theory Revolution, where we empower you with notation-free theory for making great music. So, after the incredible response we got from my brother's debut drum video on our channel, thank you so much for that. We're super pumped to welcome Tony back for another awesome lesson. On that note, if you enjoy this video, then you can download a step-by-step -step PDF guide for it. The link is below. Also, if you don't want to miss our new video every week, then make sure you hit subscribe below and then hit the bell for notifications. Okay, we'll hand you over to Tony now. But first, two. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony Holroyd, and today we're going to take a look at the chorus of Ray's new single. In this section, the guitar and bass are playing the same thing. So this is a two for the price of one video, as I will show you how to build your own killer drum beat from a guitar riff and a bass line. Number one, kick the roof. Okay, so let's take a listen to the roof. We'll start by copying the riff with our kick drum. By doing this, we add weight to the part, giving it a heavier downward feel, which is perfect for a metal song like this. For other riff based genres, there are two other possibilities. Option A, kick the riff and subtract. If the riff is very busy, you may want to just pick your moments by finding a few important notes in the riff to support. This allows you to complement it without weighing down the groove as much. Option B, kick the riff and add. On the other hand, if the riff feels too sparse, you may want to add one or more notes to enhance the flow. One final point, playing the riff on the kick is the most common approach, but if you want to get a bit more creative, you can also use the snare drum and toms. Number two, add a cymbal rhythm. Next, we'll add some eighth notes on the hi-hat. This will frame the riff, which will make it easier for the listener to connect the riff to the pulse of the song. This is especially useful if you are playing something rhythmically complex. Eighth notes are perfect for this example, but if your track is slower, the eighth notes may seem too spacious. Then try a sixteenth note cymbal rhythm. If on the other hand the tempo is really fast, you may want to use quarter notes. Let's talk about the voicing. Voicing refers to which percussion instruments your rhythms are played on. The cymbal rhythm could be played on any cymbal, hi-hats, a ride, crash, china, or cymbal stack. The voice I choose is usually determined by the arrangement. For instance, I will think things like, does this next section want to get brighter or darker, louder or softer, compared to the previous section? You could also voice this rhythm on something that is not a cymbal, like a floor tom, cowbell, tambourine, a rim, or as soft notes on the snare drum. Number three, add a backbeat. The backbeat, aka afterbeat, is an accented rhythm played on the snare drum. There are a few different versions, regular, half time, and double time. In its most common form, the regular backbeat places the snare drum on beats two and four. Half time stretches the pattern over two measures, so the backbeat falls on beat three. Double time compresses the pattern, which results in the backbeat hitting all the offbeat eighth notes. Most popular music for the past 60 plus years has a backbeat, so clearly it works. Let's try out each version with our riff and see how they feel. First, the regular backbeat. You may have noticed I'm subtracting the kick notes that fall under the snare hits. This creates a cleaner, tighter feel. You can also leave them in to give your groove a bit more grit. Okay, let's check out the half-time backbeat. So, the half-time backbeat could be useful if you want to downshift the intensity level in your arrangement or give an intricate riff some room to breathe. Be careful though, at slower tempos, the half-time backbeat may not provide enough momentum for your groove. Next, the double-time backbeat. Da, 
that ramped up the intensity level, right? On the downside though, it can sometimes make the riff feel boxed in. Moving on. If we shift the double time backbeat an eighth note earlier, the snare hits fall on every beat. This is no longer a backbeat, but is possibly the next most common snare drum rhythm used in popular music today. So, that has a similar drive and intensity to the double time backbeat, but it has a more grounded feel. Experiment with the backbeat and see which type will serve your song the best. For the chorus of I ended up using the regular backbeat. So now we have a working beat based on our riff. We're done, right? Wrong. Number four, add some spice. So even though we have a custom built beat for our riff, to me, it is still generic, as most experienced drummers would arrive at a similar result. I always try to take things one step further and add something unique. Check out my previous video on how to spice up a generic drum beat for some useful ways to go about doing this. In this case, I used a partial revoice. I split the kick drum part between the kick and floor tom using a call and response type phrase. This gave the beat a more percussive tribal vibe, which I felt made the chorus more distinctive. And just a quick note before Tony plays the final version, if you dig his drumming and want to hear more, then check out revolutionharmony.com slash Tony. Also, if you want to bring your own music to life with live drumming, not my air drumming, then drop Tony an email and ask him about his online recording service. You can contact him through the form on that same page that Kate mentioned. On that note, here is the final playthrough. <laughs> 